Friday, everybody. Welcome back to Hot News. You ready to go hot into the weekend? Let's do it by talking about what could potentially be one of the hottest cards of the entire world. I don't know. That doesn't work. I don't know. I'm just I'm talking about Navi 21. I'm talking about big Navi. I'm talking about a big fat 72 compute unit, 2.2 gigahertz mammoth of a card. This is actually coming out from Moore's Law is Dead with a report from his side. He said to take it with a grain of salt because this is from one of his sources. So I will obviously reiterate that. Take it with a grain of salt. We actually can't necessarily confirm everything that's happening with this, but if any of this is true, it is going to be slightly exciting, just maybe a little bit. And if we could just go ahead and take a look at the slide in which he talks about it, we have a 2.2 gigahertz boost clock, right? Roughly 300 watts power supply, but it's this little area highlighted in green. That's the uh, really special part. Performance to be expected 40 to 50% over a 2080 Ti with IPC increase, which is quite Substantial, quite substantial. 40 to 50% over a 2080 Ti when AMD can't even get within a 2080 Ti striking distance right now with regular Navi. And also in his video, Moore's Law is Dead, talks about the fact that he thinks that the reason that AMD is calling the next generation of our DNA to Navi 2X is because they want to double the performance and having double the compute units and being roughly to 40 to 50% over a 2080 Ti would be about double where the 5700 XT is currently. So this obviously should be taken with a grain of salt. He did say that his source is NVIDIA on this and that NVIDIA is expecting that AMD is going to come out with a competitor that is 40 to 50% better than a 2080 Ti, which would be obviously phenomenal. The question is, right? So number one, can AMD actually do this? It is possible. Number two, the question is if indeed they are beating the 2080 Ti by around 40 to 50%, which is also kind of where we've been hearing the 3080 Ti will land up, What's the price? How much is AMD gonna charge for this? Are they gonna pull another 5700 XT scenario where they announce a specific price, Nvidia drops the price on their cards, and then AMD drops the price on their cards to be like, ha ha, we were planning to do this all wrong, and so we actually win now. Just like they did with the 5600 XT and the extra VRAM speed. Yeah, that went phenomenally. So what do you think of this? Just want to hear from you. 40 to 50% over a 20 ATI. Do you think it's possible? Do you think AMD is going to do this? And do you think they're going to charge a reasonable price? There's been a rumors of this potentially costing $1,000, which would be $200 cheaper than what NVIDIA currently has on the market, which of course, NVIDIA could also just drop their price. But that's not the only little bit of AMD information we have. Adore TV came out and talked about how it's expected that Zen 3 will have 20% higher integer performance over Zen 2. This is coming after some information has been leaked on Milan and then converting that versus what's going on with currently Rome, which is a Zen 2 processor. Milan is supposed to be the epic version of Zen 3 and then seeing, yes, it is about 20% faster in integer performance and roughly 10 to 15% better in general scenarios. However, also with that, they did say that Zen 3 will not be 50% better as has been posited by some other people. So 20% integer performance improvement, 10 to 15% in other scenarios. Is this something that would make you switch to Zen 3? Have you been holding off for the next generation of chips? Is Ryzen 4000 going to be the time that you want to pick something up? Let me know. Ryzen 4000, 20% faster than the Ryzen 3000. Is this where you want it to be? And then let's just go ahead and talk about a article that we discussed earlier in the week with regards to Nvidia's 12 pin power connector or the upcoming expected 12 pin power connector. Well, there's been more information coming out surrounding that. Number one, it does appear like this connector has been submitted to PCI SIG, which means that it is technically an official connector. Then number two, there's been more schematics drawn on it. And actually it appears that it is not compatible with two six pin PCI Express power connectors, which would mean that you would need either an adapter from two six pins or you would need an actual 12 pin adapter, which can be split up into two six pins. However, if you look at the diagram for the PCI Express six pin and the diagram for the NVIDIA 12 pin, you can see that they are not compatible. You cannot just swip swap them across each other. They will not fit, which would mean that you would indeed need to make sure that your power supply is compatible or it ships with adapters, or maybe probably potentially NVIDIA is going to be shipping adapters in their upcoming reference editions. However, there's also been some information talking about on the internet how in this FC Power Up article that 
that the original Chinese said he edited the above content or potentially depending on the translation you use said I made up the entire content but as you can see here as I'm looking at it right now they have already even updated that and saying that some readers especially foreign readers cannot understand Chinese humor and they will update the latest drawings and new summaries the news is true it's just that it's apparently he was making a joke so there you go that's happening and what also has happened is that dr disrespect got banned off of twitch with no information whatsoever coming out from either twitch's side or dr disrespect side i believe this was on june 26 that he got banned so we're coming up on nearly a month since it happened and pc gamer finally got an interview with him in which he basically said that twitch did not tell him why he's banned he has no actual communication with twitch on this it doesn't make sense that they would do this they're reviewing their options to return to streaming at some point trying to make it the best next launch that they can dr disrespect 3.0 or so they are reviewing legal options against twitch whether or not to bring a lawsuit against them but he can't speak too much to that simply because of pending legal issues at this point it did feel like a lot of this interview was filtered behind a legal counsel and so we don't have the actual story of what's going on he did say that he saw all of the rumors and also that last little clip that came out of his last stream on twitch which made it seem like he was acting weird he said that that was not connected with the ban and that well, he was just reflecting on everything that's gone wrong in 2020 and that it wasn't connected to that at all and that actually came later so take that for what it's worth dr disrespect finally speaking out about it he also tweeted out a video as of right now that's the only thing he's tweeted out recently which essentially just says that he will be back and things may be out of his control but he hasn't lost control and apple's gaining control because they are bringing obviously apple silicon to themselves and it looks like they are going to be contracting tsmc to make apple silicon which j just makes sense they're already using tsmc to make their iphone soc so it makes sense that that would happen tsmc See also reporting that they're expecting Apple Silicon to really take off in the second half of 2021, which lines up with the timeline that Apple has already given that they're going to be transitioning more fully to Apple Silicon over the next two years. I have a brain thought that maybe one day Apple might decide to build their own foundry and just completely vertically integrate that and get rid of TSMC in the process, just so they are completely in control of possibly everything that could happen and Microsoft being in control of the Xbox because they're they're getting rid of it which also means TSMC is going to have less business but they're going to get more Apple business but less AMD business but even more AMD business because next gen consoles anyways Microsoft discontinuing the Xbox One X and the Xbox One S digital edition however they are saying that the regular Xbox One S will still continue to go for sale this could potentially mean that the expected upcoming Xbox Series S could come in at the price point of the One X of like three to four hundred dollars that's what I'm trying to say gosh dang it Microsoft your naming scheme is atrocious and Microsoft wants to make sure that their next game showcase isn't atrocious with them saying that it's just going to be just games, okay? No business, no devices or similar things. It's just games, okay? You can expect just games, kind of like what Sony gave us, kind of, you know, actually making it so that it's an experience the consumer actually wants to see instead of just you guys. Anyways, just games next week, July 23rd, 9 a.m. Pacific time, Xbox Game Showcase. They also announced that Xbox Game Pass Ultimate will now include xCloud, which is obviously Microsoft. Microsoft's grand strategy for video games, not to sell consoles, but to sell a service, to sell an experience. xCloud is their cloud gaming application, which allows you to play video games over the internet, on your phone, on whatever device you have, and it's gonna be included in Game Pass Ultimate, which gives you games access for the price of $15 right now. It also includes Xbox Live, which is the price you have to pay for playing online. So Game Pass Ultimate, including a whole host of different things, and then also now going to be bundled with xCloud, which is crazy. And xCloud being announced that it's gonna go public in September, which with the idea that xCloud is going to be included for a $15 a month subscription, not only do you get the cloud gaming service, but you also get games for $15 a month. Why would anybody pay $10 a month for Stadia Pro, which gives you no games, okay? You get the free games every month, but that's that's nothing. You don't get a free library of games, which is what Xbox Game Pass is. This seemingly, at least to me, would either put the nail in the coffin of Stadia or force Google to pivot, which they absolutely should, in my opinion. Well, let's talk about the other cloud game streaming service, which is GeForce Now. They announced the new games that are coming to their service, Death Stranding, Hyperscape, Far Cry Primal, 
to uh, Ghost Recon Breakpoint, Trackmania 2, in case any of those matter to you, you could check the full list out down below. And then let's talk about Destiny 2, the new expansion that was supposed to come out sometime soon, got delayed to November 10th. And at the end of this month, Sony is going to be unveiling the A7S 3 which is expected to be their flagship video camera. The A7S 2 stood at the top for quite some time of low light photography, just was phenomenal in so many different ways. The A7S 3 could potentially even surpass that, should. Obviously, they're launching a new one after five years. But it's been more than five years since we got a MIDI standard update. Well, USB IF finally published the specifications for MIDI 2.0. Haha. <laughs> Oh, it's been a long time, folks. It's been a long time since we've been to the sun. We haven't been walking on the sun since Smash Mouth. That was a bad joke, I'm so sorry. Anyways, NASA and ESA have posted the images, the closest images ever taken by the sun. This was done by the solar orbiter getting really, really close to that burning ball of juice, which is what Twitter turned into, just a burning ball of juice and explosions everywhere with Crypto scams going wild on some of the top verified accounts on the platform. You can see here Barack Obama, Joe Biden, Apple, Elon Musk, Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, all getting hacked and also all saying that if you donate Bitcoin, they will give you double in return. I think the obvious like giveaway that this was fake was Jeff Bezos saying that he decided to give back to his community. Anyways, this caused Twitter to go into a frenzy. They locked down all verified accounts. They weren't able to tweet for several hours. It was only the unverified people. And then Twitter coming out and saying that this was due to social engineering of their employees who got access to internal systems. This was not compromised passwords. So that's not what happened here. Twitter got hacked, not all of these accounts. And Twitter saying that no passwords were stolen, but there's no words on whether or not DMs were compromised or if anybody got any information through that. So big yikes, Twitter going up in a ball of flames. They are saying that they're gonna be working and reviewing all of these policies. They're gonna be locking down certain accounts moving forward right now if it does seem like they were compromised at all. However, if you are locked down, that doesn't necessarily mean you were compromised. They just are reviewing everything because it's crap, man. That's pretty bad when freaking the president, vice president, presidential candidate, Elon Musk, like all of them just get crypto scammed. It's crazy. But the last crazy thing I'll talk to you about today is if you, in case you want to play Microsoft Flight Simulator in Europe and you want to do it in the most retro way possible, I guess, they are coming out with a physical copy, which is DVDs. Yes, my friends, 10 dual layer DVDs for 90 gigabytes of game assets are being sold. A physical copy on DVDs. Wowza. And that's what I have to say about the news this week. Wowza, we did it. Good job, we're done. Let me know what you think of anything and everything that we talked about this week down below in the comments. I'm keen to hear from you down there. Go well into the weekend, friends, and I'll see you on Monday. Really appreciate every single one of you. I think you're beautiful people.